your problem, cool bar? You don't like croissants? Stupid name, but they taste good. Hello there, beautiful human. My name is Maddie of The Girly Geek and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome if you are new here. Nice to meet you. Today I am sharing with you a video of me once again attempting or pretending that I am getting my life together um, by setting up a new reading journal for 2021. Now I know what you're thinking. 2021 began a long time ago and you are correct. Let's just say my inspiration came a little bit late this year. She was taking her sweet time. Um, no, better late than never, right? So it's been a couple months and I accidentally wrote 2020 because, you know, it was a memorable year. Um, but I got inspired to use some of the things I have lying around the house, such as craft paper, stickers, washi tape, you know, my favorite things. It's been a little while since I've done this kind of bullet journal approach. Um, for the past few years, I've been strictly a planner girl because my perfectionism means bullet journaling takes a long time um, and I make a lot of mistakes and end up starting all over. So. My reading journals have been pretty simple and more simply just like a reading log. I mean, I still doodled and they are very cute and illustrative, but I didn't go so heavy into the like full on decorating mode with, you know, collage and stickers and washi and all that. But I wanted to do it to document my reading a little bit more and be able to keep track of things like this page of goals that I'm working on. I used to be a book blogger, if you didn't know. The Girly Geek started as a book reviewing blog and I was pretty seriously into it, but there was a lot of pressure and, I don't know, competitiveness to read as much as you can. Um, and it kind of burnt me out. I took it very seriously. I would track my reading each year in serious spreadsheets with algorithms and everything to keep track of how many pages I read, how many minutes I spent reading, like genre, author, background, everything, that kind of thing. Um, and it just kind of started to suck some of the pleasure out of reading. I felt like I wasn't really doing it for myself and for fun anymore. I've kind of put less pressure on myself to, you know, read X amount of books per year. I mean, I still set a numerical goal, but it's nowhere near as harsh as it used to be when I was like a teenager and blogging and everything like that. But I just wanted to give myself this creative outlet to make it feel fun and to give myself a place to gather my thoughts. Um, even if it's not like a serious written review. Yeah, I've just finished doing some of the lettering and doodling on the page. I'm really obsessed with how the theme is turning out so far. I don't really have a name for it. I just, you know, it's kind of floral, kind of whimsy, but also rustic with the added craft paper look. I don't know what I would call it. So I'm just putting in a bunch of squares to kind of cross off a color in whenever I finish reading a book. Like I said, I do have a numerical goal, but I'm not as hard on myself to read like 70 books a year or try and hit 100 books a year like I used to be because I'm older, I'm wiser. I now read only what I want to read. I mean, I don't force myself to sit through things that a lot of people are talking about. I don't have the pressure of having to read ARCs on time anymore, although I would still love to get ARCs. Um, but it's really more about quality over quantity, and I know that's a really overused phrase. Um, but yeah, over the past few years, I've just been focusing on reading what I want to read, what makes me feel good, what helps me escape, and for the most part, that has been contemporary and romance novels. 
um, which is a far cry from what I used to read, honestly. I mean, I was very heavy into sci-fi and fantasy, especially YA and contemporary YA, and obviously I've grown up a lot. I'm turning 24 soon, so it's just a bit difficult for me to reckon with coming-of-age stories that focus around people who are 16 or 17 years old when I know as someone who is now almost 24 that coming of age doesn't happen that young really. I mean most of us in our mid-20s are hot messes and I like to read fiction that resembles that. I mean for the most part not many people have the great adventure or great love of their life when they are 16 or 17 so it's not all that relatable is it but mainly i just want to stop pigeonholing myself and trying to put myself into these little boxes um i read whatever i want to read so i want a place to contain that mess i guess <laughs> So that's what this journal is going to be. This next page I want it to be a bit more decorative. I didn't just want this to be full of pages of writing. Um, I wanted to do some, you know, artistic pages here and there. So I'm going in and doing a bit of illustration. Um, and I came up with this style that I've been doing recently where I use different colored pens on the different colored paper but the image overlaps the two so you can see I have the inverse um, black and white ink for the illustration and I think it gives a pretty cool effect if I do say so myself. I'm still going with the same theme of craft paper florals but this time in illustration instead of the stickers and that grid washi tape as well and I'm going to go in with some alphabet stickers and put in a quote. Um, I searched high and low for a quote about reading, but you know, a lot of them are overused and pretty cheesy. Um, and I couldn't find something that really encapsulated what I wanted to have on the page. So I kind of just made up my own. Um, and you'll see I adjusted a couple of times over the course of me meticulously laying out these letters but I adjusted it a couple times and eventually settled on something I think captures what I wanted to share. It took an absurd amount of time to get these alphabet letters somewhat even and centered but in the end I changed it up a little bit and you can't see very well but what I ended up with in the end was the quote, There is truly no comfort like the company of a book. I originally wanted it to say there is truly no comfort like the company of a good book. But I was so fed up with fiddling with the letters by this point, I simply gave up. And I swiftly moved on to doing an anticipated releases page. And I kind of got this idea to use the craft paper as some shelves and then doodle on some stacks of books in which I could write the titles of my anticipated releases in the spines. So I'm here cutting out these little shelves, supposedly wooden shelves, um, and trying to find a configuration that looks kind of cute because I also want to add some height in there with some other objects like plants um, and other various decor items. I really just wanted to channel the cozy reading corner of my dreams. I mean, the space that I don't have but wish I had. Um, so I'm just going in and sketching a couple of different decor items and plants and trying to figure out what would look best um, and not too scraggly, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I do the most of my drawing digitally now using my iPad, so when it comes to pen and paper, I feel very insecure about making mistakes, especially when I use pen or, um, you know, textures. So I really had to let some of that perfectionism go and just be like, hey, I don't care about each and every item, I just care about the whole at the end and how that ends up looking. 
and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with it. I must admit though, it was a bit challenging to figure out what kind of pages I wanted to feature in my reading journal, just because there is so many different creative ideas out there. I mean, you go onto Instagram or Pinterest and search for reading journal inspo and there's so many elaborate pages and designs that are obviously beautiful and immaculate, but at the end of the day, it's about choosing what works for you and what you want to incorporate into your life. I had so many aspirational images that I saw, but then I was like, I don't actually care about tracking that specific thing or, you know, it doesn't apply to me. So I basically just came up with something that works for me. I mean, some people, it works for them to have pages with a lot of writing and that definitely works for me um, in some cases but I just wanted to have an excuse to draw more I guess I guess yeah I wanted to doodle more so I featured pages that are pretty doodle heavy <laughs> that sounds really funny but pretty illustration heavy um, just because I wanted to have a chance to do some As you can see, I'm testing out some of the colors before I end up using them on the page. Um, I think that's one of the most frustrating things about non-digital drawing, um, is that the colors don't appear as they appear on the actual pen, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, cause I usually have an idea of what I want the illustrations to look like. Oftentimes that vision also includes what I want the colors to look like and that varies pretty widely from what I have available to me in terms of highlighters and textures and pencils or whatever that I have at home. So, you know, you get used to using your iPad and using Procreate to get the exact color and just dropping it into place. But on paper, it's a little bit more difficult to match things to your vision, but I don't let it hold me back. I try not to focus on the little things that, you know, perfectionist me would have absolutely gone crazy over a couple years ago but now i'm just you know focusing on the bigger picture next part of that bigger picture for this page included a couple more decor items to put on the bottom of the page i used another strip of the craft paper to make it look like a desk or table underneath the shelf area and then I went ahead and sketched out some other decor items that I thought would look really cute on that little area. Um, and I just actually sketched them onto white sticker paper so that it would be easy for me to cut them out and then just stick them on. Um, if I was being really meticulous, I would have probably drawn them on my iPad and then made the stickers. But I wanted it to match the style of the rest of the page and not look... You know different I wanted to go with the vibe that the rest of the page had and make it all coherent so I'm using the same technique of just outlining with my Muji gel pen and then coloring it in with my click art pens or my mild liners here I'm just gathering together the little stickers that I've made after I meticulously cut them out instead of putting them on my Cricut, which I really didn't think about, but I did a little open book, an iced coffee, a plant, and a record player, which I've arranged on the little table. I did all of these spreads across a couple of weeks, so you can see here I'm filling in and catching up on some of the books that I have read, and then I'm going ahead and writing some titles in the anticipated releases page. So I had a little note in the notes of my phone, which detailed all the releases I'm really excited for this year. Most of them are contemporary and romance novels, which are debuting this year. And they are mostly from authors that I've already read before, so I am keen to get to read more from. These spines of the books don't have a whole lot of space to write in, but I managed to fit in all the titles. Um, I decided to forego adding the author's names um, just because it simply wouldn't fit and it would look way too cramped. Um, so at least I have a list in my phone to cross-reference and I also have my trusty memory, which 
only fails me occasionally, so I should be fine. Now I am starting a new page, which is going to be my 2021 in review page. So it will basically have a breakdown of each month of the year, how many books I read, how many of those were physical, how many were ebooks or audiobooks. I wasn't totally pleased with my handwriting on this page. It didn't come out how I wanted. I've done it fine before, but for some reason it just wasn't cooperating today. But it's fine. It looks alright in the end. Um, I'm going through and tidying that up a bit. And then also getting started on the little doodles around it as well. And to tie it in with the rest of the pages, I'm pulling some stickers, some floral stickers from the Happy Planner Pressed Florals sticker book, which I've been using for a bunch of the other pages as well. I'm basically, for this section, just using a box sticker to write the month in. Um, I use my Tombow Funusuki brush pen for the month. And then for the actual table itself, I'm just using my favorite, my trusty Muji gel pen in 0.38. Then I get started working on the next page, which is the continuation of the year in review. Um, I realized that I made the months way too large on the other page and didn't even get halfway through the year. So I kind of had to cramp things in for the second half. Um, there was a little bit of adjusting, but I made it fit. Um, I'm kind of annoyed with myself because of how asymmetrical it is, but it's not the end of the world, so it's fine. I'm using, once again, the pressed florals and some slightly thinner boxes from that to write in the months and also embellish some flowers as well. I mean, I'm well known for being a huge fan of florals, especially in my happy planner, but with this page in particular, this two page spread, um, it's really like that meme where it's like, do you want flowers? And I'm like, yes. I can't stop. I won't stop. Florals till the end of time. So yeah, I'm continuing by going on ruling some lines to make my little tables like you can see on the other half of the page and then doing in the little writing. Look how cramped December got. I mean, I'm glad I got it on the page, but like I almost didn't, you know? And then I wanted to add another page, which I'm doing now, using a sticker sheet from my own Etsy store. This is the Cozy Book Corner sticker set, which comes with a little sheet of matching colored clear dots for bullet points. I'll link it down below if you're interested, but basically it's a soft pastel colored sheet and I really wanted to incorporate it into this reading journal because I thought it was so fitting, obviously. Um, so I'm going to be using it for my reading log page, which you see I'm doing the lettering for now. I am really in love with this sticker set. I think it's my favorite out of all the ones that I've made so far, which is quite a lot. But um, yeah, it's the one I'm probably most proud of and I really, really wanted to incorporate it into some of the first pages of this journal. So I'm keeping it cohesive with the rest of the pages by using the craft paper and the white pen and the washi. And I think it fits really well with the pastel colors that I've used in these stickers as well. And I'm just kind of making a border and then having the main body of the page to write all of the books that I read each month this year. So I'm not going to make things overly complicated in my log. Um, basically in my past bullet journal for last year, I kept it pretty simple. Um, and in my log, I just keep track of what number the read is for this year. When I finished it, um, the name, if it's in a series, the author and my rating. Um, and the rest can go in whatever spreadsheet I decide to keep. That being genre, um, things like author's background, if it's written by a person of color, the gender of the author, and that sort of thing as well. Also, how long it took me to read, roughly, in days, or how long the audiobook was, or the amount of pages, 
or something like that. I'm not as concerned with those details as I used to be in the past, but I do still like to keep them in a spreadsheet. And I have no idea why, it's just for my own nerdy personal reasons. So I finished up the decorating for this double page spread with you know, the usual, adding the stickers onto the brown craft paper, which I think makes them really pop, and then adding in some whimsy little star clusters as well. For the text on the page, I decided to keep it fairly simple. I used a Tompera brush pen in a soft pink color to do a little swatch behind, and then I waited for it to dry and then just wrote the month or the name of the month in my gel pen. Originally you can see I went with these little black circles that I was going to use my white jelly roll pen to put the number of the read into um, but it didn't turn out to be very opaque and it was a bit too thick and looked messy so I ended up changing that a little on down the line um, in favor of simply writing the number in my black gel pen and then using the matching colored clear sticker bullet that comes with my sticker set to stick over it so that it makes a pink solid color. Here is what it ended up looking like once I filled in all the books I've read so far this year and I'm just going to have a quick flick back to show you all the pages that I added in this video. My title page, my reading goals, my book tracker, the little quote page, my anticipated releases shelf, the 2021 year in review page, and then the beginnings of my reading log. I kept it really quite simple with the details of my reads, but that's only because I'm hoping to add a bunch more detailed pages going into genre, themes, tropes and everything into this journal in the future. And hopefully you will stick around to see that. If you do want to be around for that, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications and leave a comment down below letting me know what some of your anticipated releases are for this year and what kind of things you like to keep track of in your reading journal because I would love some inspo for my next video. If you would like to keep up with me and my shenanigans, you can find more journal inspo and planner inspo on my Instagram at the girly geek and you can also check out my Etsy store for more cute stickers if you're interested. But I'll see you guys very soon.